Thank you so much, Chair Brush. And to members of the Board of Governors from Northern College, if you are joining us this evening, good evening. Wache, Ani, Kwekwe, Bonsoir to everyone. I'm absolutely thrilled to be bringing to you for the first time our mid-year strategic plan monitoring of our brand new strategic plan. And what I'm particularly proud of is our plan was developed during COVID, our mid-year monitoring has been during COVID, and you're not going to hear us talk about the pandemic. You're going to hear us talk about the nine strategic actions that we've brought to life in the past six months. And Melanie's going to move the slide. Our vision, as you know, is empowering all learners to achieve personal excellence, and you're going to see some examples of personal excellence and that our day-to-day -day work, our mission continues to be together. We inspire innovation and a passion for learning. Our three priorities, culture, innovation, and equity. And I'll remind everyone that we do have nine strategic actions. The red row are our culture strategic actions of communication, relationships, resiliency, innovation, the middle row that's in black, pathways and partnerships, trust, growth mindset, and finally in the golden rod, equity, understanding our needs, courage, and student voice. At this time, it is my pleasure to pass our presentation to Superintendent Meany. Thank you, Director Dye. In DSP1, we define our priority of culture as we promote caring, wellness, and model high expectations. This year, our strategic plan goal related to the priority of culture is that 80% of students will report that they felt that their school welcomed them back after virtual learning as measured by the Student Climate Survey. Student Senate is working with the Student Success Portfolio to develop one school climate survey for students. This survey will be administered in second semester and an external firm will be, will be hired to provide support with data analysis. And the results from this survey will be shared with the Board of Trustees, the Student Senate and school staff. And now I will pass it over to Superintendent Pladzik who will speak about the strategic action of relationships. Thank you, Superintendent Nimi. The relationship goal, that of supporting schools and creating welcoming and caring schools to re-engage all students is one that we strive to meet and improve upon every year. Uh, today, uh, this goal will be shared through the lens of our mental health staff. Once again, the mental health of our students has remained a priority as they re-entered our schools. We knew it was important to begin engaging with our students from day one of school, but also it was important to maintain and build our engagement levels as we believe that our students may have increased mental health related concerns. To date, we have seen increases of around 40% in the number of referrals and the number of suicide risk assessments that we have completed over this time last year. With few exceptions, we have no wait lists and the longest a student has waited to see their mental health professional has been one week. We have some examples of uh, why this high level of service remains. Of course, uh, there's a couple on your screen. Uh, we have our school social worker at Kirkland Lake District uh, Conference at School welcoming students in the main lobby of the school every morning, not just to be a friendly face, but to ensure that those students that he has an appointment with that day are showing up. And uh, he makes a point of letting them know uh, that he needs to see them um, that day. Um, uh, next slide. <clears throat> Thank you. Certainly uh, examples that include are uh, some of our CYWs using uh, jam boards, which are interactive PowerPoints for students. We are using a new online booking app, which has allowed students to control when their appointments are uh, and it's given them enhanced responsibility, control and accessibility. And uh, we all continue to offer services using both in-person and virtual methods. 
And now I would like to turn it over to Superintendent Edwards. Thank you. For our strategic action of communication, uh, our information services department is working with stakeholders to create reporting tools. The new reporting tools will support evidence-based analysis and decision-making uh, and tracking of results. As an example, we have a, a new data analyst who joined the team in, in the fall, uh, and he's been working with board office staff to create uh, reports and tools. These tools will save many hours of analyzing data so that we can make more, um, really well-informed decisions in a very timely fashion. And now I'd like to pass it on to system lead, Jill Plant. Thank you, Superintendent Edwards. The Indigenous portfolio continues to work on providing opportunities to build capacity for all staff and students to ensure we are effectively supporting students who self-identify as Indigenous. We've been busy uh, in the past year. We've hosted two book clubs. Uh, our first book was From the Ashes and our second was Five Little Indians. We begin our third novel study, Crow Winter, by an author from Temiskaming First Nation in the beginning of April. Each study has three meetings where we discuss themes, characters, and learning from the novels. We continue to work on building more community partnerships. The second picture is from Roll Michener Secondary School. In the fall, the Timmins Native Friendship Centre was coming to Roll Michener weekly to host a drumming circle, to offer teachings, and to build relationships with students. As the weather has become colder, we have not had the opportunity to host drumming circles due to COVID restrictions. We are looking forward to warmer weather uh, and to continue our work with the Timmins Friendship Centre uh, in the spring. DSB1 and Northern College continues to partner and in the fall we were able to host a, a session in the evening with Jesse Wenty. Jesse is an Ojibwe broadcaster, curator, producer, uh, activist, public speaker and is the author of Unreconciled. Jesse spoke about the importance of truth uh, over the flawed concept of reconciliation and the need to build a new and respectful relationship between the nation of Canada and Indigenous people. We had a great turnout and we're looking forward to what we're hosting in the fall of 2022. Another training uh, that we, we provided the Indigenous student advisors was mental health training that focused on culture and how we can support students who self-identify in a culturally safe and appropriate way. We continue to work with the mental health team uh, and look for ways that we can collaborate to ensure students are getting high levels of support. The last story I don't have a picture for, but I, I just had to share because it really speaks to the work that we're doing and uh, the impact it has on students, both past and present. Recently, a student who identifies as Indigenous and who is also a graduate of uh, District School Board Ontario Northeast reached out to Director Dye and asked them to be a reference as they were applying to be an unqualified supply teacher. This is a student who had different challenges when he started secondary school. As he went through high school, he continued to take risks and grow in a very supportive environment. He recognizes the supports and opportunities that are in place for students who are Indigenous in our board and for all students. He's looking forward uh, to giving students similar opportunities that he had um, as an unqualified supply teacher and he looks to be a mentor to the students. I'm very hopeful and maybe I'm planning his future for him but that he will decide to go into the education field and potentially come back uh, and work in DSB1. Miigwech, and over to you, Superintendent Nimi. Thank you, Lead Plot. In DSB1, we define our priority of innovation as we cultivate thinking and specific actions to improve. This year's innovation goal for our strategic plan is to increase participation in Pathways programs. Examples of these types of programs are the Specialist High Skills Major programs, the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship programs, e-learning, and experiential learning. This evening, we are going to discuss 
the Specialist High Skills Major Programs and the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Programs. This chart shows data, baseline data related to the SHSM programs. Starting on the left is the most current year, this school year, 2021 to, to 2022, and then we have prior years going from left to right. So if we read from right to left, we can see that we were having, we had a nice steady increase in the total number of students participating in SHSM from 2017 to 2018, all the way to 2019, 2020. So that is the first row in the chart. We had a slight decrease during the last couple of years, and we looked to, to increase those numbers uh, to surpass our 2019, 2020 data. The board footprint would be defined as a measure of the overall sustainability of the specialist high skills major programs in DSB1. And that is calculated by the Ministry of Education and communicated to school boards based on the sustainability of our programs. Uh, again, as you can see, going from right to left, we, we had a very nice increase happening, uh, a slight decrease during the last couple of years, but we're looking to um, improve that data as well. And I'll draw your attention to the last row. That is DSB1's completion rate for the Specialist High Skills Major programs. And from 2016-17 to 2019-20, we had um, a very steady increase, almost, well, uh, an increase by 16% over three years. And again, a slight decrease, um, but we're hoping to improve that data. And the 2021-2022 data will be released this upcoming fall. This chart, it shows the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program board data. So the first row, again, the, I'll, I'll mention that um, the most current data is on the left. 2021, 2022, and then we go back in, in the years from left to right. And um, we can see that we have fewer students participating um, in OYAP, and that might be for a variety of reasons. We did set an overall goal that we would have 50 participants this year, and we have met that goal. And really, we're only in the middle of the school year right now, so we still are um, uh, recruiting for semester two and um, which, which just got underway this week. The third and fourth row do show, uh, do show data for students who identify as Indigenous and students who um, have special education needs. And we've included this data because we continue to implement strategies to support students who are marginalized. And now I will pass it over to Lee Yi, who will share information uh, related to the strategic action of Pathways and Partnerships. Thank you, Superintendent Nimi. As part of the Pathways and Partnerships strategic action, our focus is to increase student participation in the specialist high skills majors and expand programs as well as community partnerships. Currently, there are 18 specialist high skills majors in the board, two of which are board wide. This means that students from smaller secondary schools have an opportunity to participate in a specialist high skills major. We are also expanding the number of specialist high skills majors in the board. Recently, we have completed an application to the ministry for an information communications technology schism at Temiskaming District for the 22 2022-2023 school year. Cregan Lake District Composite School has been able to expand learning opportunities for students by offering five additional sections in cooperative education and technology as part of the specialist high skills major expansion funding provided by the ministry. This was completed through an application process. During the past five years, we have added six new specialist high skills major programs in the board. We have expanded the sector areas to align with student interests and local employment opportunities. The sectors listed below are the areas which we have added during the past few years. Since all students in the specialist high skills major are required to take cooperative education, we have also continued to increase our partnerships in our communities where students are completing their placements. 
Student Success Pathways is also focused on program expansions for OEAP Level 1 programs in collaboration with Northern College and School College Work. We have been able to increase our OEAP programs and student registrations while also expanding in different regions of the board. In the central region, for example, we are offering the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship uh, Program Level 1 Electrical, which has not been offered for many years. We also are offering an OEAP Level 1 Welding at the Northern College Porcupine Campus, and we have been able to enroll students, a few students, from Iroquois Falls Secondary Schools, School. We have removed any possible barriers for students to participate in this program, and we are even offering transportation to students to and from uh, Northern College in Iroquois Falls. In the south region of the board, students from Kirkland Lake District Composite School participated in the OEAP Level 1 Carpentry with Oversight for semester one. We also have this program running at Temiskaming District Secondary School semester two. This year, we are continuing to offer our OEAP Level 1 welding at the Kirkland Lake campus of North, for, from Northern College, but we have expanded the opportunity for other students in um, Inglehart, in Inglehart to be able to participate in this program. We have eight students from Inglehart High School who will be participating in the OEAP Level 1 program. So once again, we are expanding the opportunities to different schools and areas within the board. The student voice quote that you see on the slide is from a student at Kirkland Lake District Composite School who provides insight into how her experience has helped her make decisions about her future career. The student was enrolled in Carpentry Level 1 Oversight, which requires 20 hours of welding. Through our partnership with Northern College, we were able to arrange for the welding component, for students to take the welding component at the college. The student thoroughly enjoyed her experience and decided uh, to register for the OEAP Level 1 welding so that she can continue, so she can have an early start to her career as a welder. At this time, I would like to turn it over to Superintendent Rowe. Thank, thank you very much, Lee Yi. Uh, under the strategic action of trust, we'd like to use the next three slides to showcase some of the areas of focus with our new health and wellness coordinator position. So under the first slide you see in front of you, uh, this individual has been responsible for the immunization disclosure process as well as the rent rapid antigen testing process. So by way of numbers, you would see that we presently have approximately, it says 92 people on uh, the, in the testing program right now, we're down to 89, but this is a continuous situation where this individual tracks these people, they're tested three times a week. The other part of this job is to get the vaccination into attestations and to ensure that individuals who are not vaccinated are participating in the educational sessions. And you would know that the ministry has just mandated that we obtain booster um, vaccination status as well. So that individual is organizing that as well. Under the next slide, an area that the individual works is under the Attendance and Disability Support Program. You can see that there are 99 individuals that she's contacted to date, and these are individuals who are on long-term absences. So if we think about 99 as the total individuals that she's spoken to, you'll see that 51 have returned to full-time duties. So 50%, just slightly over 50%, have returned to full-time duties. And you'll see there's about another 10% that have returned either through accommodation processes or by volunteering. We do have about 29 or 30% of our staff still off uh, and they remain off and we are following up with them regularly. And then the last 10% is made up amongst leave without pays, other employment standard leaves and LTD. So this individual does an extremely large amount of work uh, monitoring, tra tracking, supporting these individuals to get them back to work in a safe and supportive manner. And the last slide is down WSIB claims and employee incidents. So this individual also, this new position, monitors our WSIB instances. We had to date 16 
uh, instance of WSIB that resulted in lost time or medical attention. And we're happy to say of the 16, 12 have been returned to their regular duties. Uh, there are three that have been returned with accommodation and one remains off. So one out of 16 remains off. 15 out of 16 have come back in either full or part capacity. And you'll see the bottom of the slide that we've also had 25 individuals who have filed a claim with WSIB, but there was no lost time or medical attention. However, the new health and wellness coordinator does follow up with them. And at this time, I would like to turn the presentation over to system lead, Mr. Mulberry. Thank you very much, Superintendent Rowe. Growth mindset is a strategic action under the innovation priority, and it can be described as a yes, I can way of thinking or attitude. Survey data from eCreo has shown that many students do not have a positive view of themselves as mathematicians. We were worried this fixed mindset about one's mathematical efficacy might become a challenge in a de-streamed grade nine mathematics class. To help students adopt a growth mindset about mathematics and to learn about brain plasticity and neuroscience, we have all students take a mini How to Learn Mathematics course created by Dr. Joe Bowler from Stanford University. And this course helps students to adopt a growth mindset towards learning mathematics. We also wanted to take a look at student feedback from their experience with the Joe Boulder course and to see if it was having a positive impact on student mindset. As you can see from the two student quotes, which were also featured in tonight's vignette, the course is helping some students shift their mindset about being capable mathematicians and their feeling that they can be successful with math in a grade 9 D stream class. We also wanted to check to see how students were doing in terms of achievement. Was this having an impact on students' ability to be successful in a grade 9 D stream math class? So we took a look at quadmaster one pass rates. And as you can see, 88% of students who were enrolled in the D stream mathematics course were successful in earning the credit during quadmaster one. On the next slide, you can see what the success rate was for students that were at the midterm reporting period. And you can see that 80% of students enrolled in the DStream math class were passing as of midterm. Since these midterms, we have met with principals to discuss how to support the students that are not being successful. Principals are then working with teachers and students are working with the student success teams or special education resource teachers to help close any gaps. For comparison purposes, last year, the pass rate for grade nine applied math was 78% and the pass rate for academic math was 93%. Now I would like to pass it over to special education lead PCOR to share some great work around equity. Thank you, lead Mowbray. In DSP1, we define equity as we anticipate, identify and work to remove barriers for each learner. This year, our target goal is to increase student participation in their identification, placement and review committee meetings. Baseline data collected from the past two years indicates that more intentional next steps are needed to improve student participation in meetings that are about their learning. When appropriate and where it makes sense, schools have been asked to involve parents, in conversations about student participation uh, for students who are in grades four and up prior to their IPRC meeting. We are also aiming to improve uh, parent engagement in IPRC meetings and also involve more teachers in key meetings that, <clears throat> sorry, to involve more teachers in key meetings that involve students who are in their classrooms. Next slide, please. To better support communication, participation and understanding, the special education team is also developing a resource for students and their families that will help to prepare them in advance of the meeting and to provide simplicity in language used to explain what a learning disability is, what a cognitive profile is and how cognitive domains impact how their child learns. Evidence to date reflects an increase of about 9% in student participation from 2020 and 2021 to the present. The data indicates that there has been an increase of 13% in the participation of elementary students and a decrease of 6% in participation of secondary students. It is important though to keep in mind that this is preliminary data 
and that most of our IPRC meetings occur between the months of April and June. Although baseline data was not previously collected, we know that leveraging teleconferences has provided a greater flexibility and increased participation for parents and guardians. The use of teleconferencing is more efficient and responsive to parent guardian needs, and it is a practice that we will be continuing long term. Next slide, please. To wrap up, I have a little success story to share about a grade nine student who identifies as Indigenous. The student has a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder and dysthymia, which is also severe depression. And the student also struggles with self-advocacy skills and anxiety. So due to work commitments, the boy's mother was unable to attend his initial IPRC meeting but she did encourage her son to join on his own. The student did make the choice to call into the meeting and he was an active participant in the discussion around his strengths and needs. So we are so proud of him. Thank you. Lead Mitchell will now speak to student voice. Thank you, Lead Picor. In order to inform our French as a second language three-year plan and determine our needs regarding programming and retention, we used a variety of methods to gather information. Student voice was captured through a survey that was sent to all grade 10, 11, and 12 students. We also provided those students the opportunity to be part of a focus group where more precise information was gathered. Lastly, all grade nine FSL students will participate in the student think tank in order to provide them with the opportunity to problem solve and suggest ideas to improve the FSL program. Highlights from the student surveys included many students stating, as in this quote, wanting to focus on authentic opportunities to speak French in order to become confident. As well, many stated that the need to offer more French courses and course options. I'll now turn it over to Superintendent Rowe. Thank, thank you, Lee Mitchell. Under the strategic action of <clears throat> understanding our needs, uh, many would know that we are embarking on new appraisal processes within the board. And you would know that we have passed our administrative staff group process uh, policy and procedures, which would include our secretarial and information services technicians group. So that appraisal process has been passed and will be implemented throughout this school year. The other area that we are looking at would be our custodial and maintenance staff. We are looking to implement a brand new appraisal process for that group, hopefully for September of 2022. Also under this strategic action, we've embarked on uh, new hiring practices. You would know that we had to uh, update and revise our hiring policies and procedures, policy 1.2.22. But more importantly, Human Resources uh, embarked on a process where we interviewed approximately 178 candidates across the board for a variety of occasional positions to try to meet the demands uh, that we're experiencing in our COVID times. So we're happy to say that we, we are still up and running. We still do have staff shortages, but we were able to put many people into occasional positions throughout the board. And this is a new process that we started this year and will probably continue in the future to help alleviate some of the demands of our school-based staff. And finally, under understanding our needs as well, the new training practices. You would know that there are many programs that are being mandated to be uh, brought out and put in front of our staff, especially our casual employees. So this year, uh, the HR department with the um, assistance of many others has embarked on virtual training. You can see from the data over the last year and a half that we've had nine sessions and we've trained just over 500 individuals, so we're averaging around 57 individuals per session to allow these people to obtain the training required and not have them have to come into a, a site and travel. It's much more efficient and it allows us to use our resources better. I would like to now turn it over to Director Dye. Thanks so much, Superintendent Rowe. On behalf of our team, miigwech, merci, and thank you.